I know you've been a, a homeless activist and you've been challenging city council here, what, since 2011? Right, because it's like, it, at first it's helping someone find a place to sleep. But it's like part of the situation is here at BOP, they're trying to help people, but the city's going against them because of the uh, codes on private property. The city wants to regulate pri private property, it wants to regulate people on public property. They want to say you can't, the only thing is people that are out here don't own property. But they have the least, uh, but their rights aren't always respected. And they're at, uh, and to move ahead, they got to go along with someone's agenda. Okay. What do you, uh, with the agenda, uh, how, how long have you been uh, paying attention to Veterans on Patrol? Um, I started, I came into contact with Lewis downtown about four to six months ago. Okay, well, what, what kind of things have you seen since then? Has, it, has he made a positive impact in, yeah. in our society? Yeah, it's, like if you, it's like if you need socks, if you need want to get off the street, if you need food, if you need different stuff, you come to Lewis, he makes it happen. If you're having trouble getting housing, he can make some phone calls and work the, and have people work that red tape for him. So it's a continuation. I remember I, I did an interview with uh, John McLean um, down at Safe Park. Uh, gosh, it must have been 2012, so it's been about three years. So this is just a continuation of kind of what you guys were trying to achieve back then? It's pretty much kind of the same ideology of creating spaces and different camps uh, uh, so that people have a place to go. So Helping that, people that, that fall through the cracks right. of traditional shelters right. and Right, and it's like, but a part, part of the whole thing is if you're going to use the terms houseless and homeless, okay. homeless is someone who's on the streets that doesn't want to be there. Houseless is someone who chooses to be there because they don't like any other option and they like being closer to nature. They like waking up and smelling ing. The yeah, dirt. working a nine to five right. and paying a mortgage and, and raising you, It's like you're not having to get in the always be working to pay bills. It's like there's enough sun in this earth to create, have the whole world run on solar energy, on wind, on all these different alternatives. There's enough space for every human on earth to have 20 acres. But how to organize it and how to dole it out is has always been a problem. Right. It's been a problem, but it's like if you're going to use a homeless or a houseless, only 15% of the people in this nation actually own property. Well, and I don't even think, like me, I, I'm buying a house, but I'll never own that property. I don't really have property rights. Right. If we had property rights, this homeless camp, there wouldn't be a problem with the city and allowing it because as long as there's property rights, you should have the right to do what you want well, on your like, property, as long as it doesn't affect your neighbor. Tell me this, what are you going to do with the house? I'm going to keep paying for it until I die, and, and even after I get it paid off, I still got to pay the taxes. So are you going to make it your sanctuary? I, well, it, that was the idea. Maybe a workstation too? Well, I don't know. I was just hoping to... Uh, have something to fall back on when I near, when I retire, so that way I have some uh, a cheap place to live. Right, and while you got bills to pay and you got a space, why not also use that space in a way that's going to bring you profit, so that you can get out of that debt, so you don't have to. I'll need to get a zone for business. <laughs> Actually, when it comes to this city code. Right. Up to 10% of your 
residential home can be used for a business. Right. Well, and then there's also a bunch of regulations on that. If I devote one room to the business, I can only use it for the business, or otherwise I can't be I can't get tax breaks as a business. Right. So if I if I use it as a business 50% of the time and then 50% of the time to watch TV, all of a sudden I, I, I screw myself out of the tax breaks. Right. And so it's like what do we have? We have someone living indoors and the government is making rules and regulations throughout their house. You got someone who's out here and the government is making rules and regulations about how much property they could acquire. Who can feed them? Who can't? Where they can lay? Where they can't? What's considered legal? What's considered illegal? Is it okay for me to take a piss if there's not a bathroom within three miles? Right. Is it, or is it cruel and unusual? Uh, At what point do we say enough's enough? Right. And it's like if you got Occupy fighting for public rights and you have VOP and a few other organizations more on the conservative side fighting for er, ownership rights. The only way we move forward is if the person fighting for public rights and the person fighting for private rights work together. Work together, because okay. they have the same interest coming against them. Which is to help people, our, our people in need, or most in need in our country. Right. And so it's like if I choose, if someone chooses not to be out here, and they get into government housing. The contract they sign with the government says that they cannot use that uh, apartment in any shape or form to make themselves an income. They can't run a business out of there. So, so do you believe in, in like uh, independent entrepreneurship then? I think we're natural social creatures. And being social, uh, socially creative creatures we automatically aspire to be what we want to be, whether it's a photographer, a lawyer, a politician, a banker, a artist. But you need a safe place to do it. You need a safe place to store your stuff. You need a safe place to assemble with other people. You need a safe place to do it, and you need to not have handcuffs on you. Part of the reason why it's hard to get out of poverty is that every single turn, you are either got to pay for something or you're, you got to sign a paper saying you're not, uh, if they work with you on this, you're not allowed to do this. So and lesson, yeah. And, right. and there's, so what you're saying is there's no way to go out there and make an honest buck like you can maybe on a black market that right. isn't so but regular. it's like the whole thing is if I get an Obama phone or or what used to be called a Bush phone but one of those government phones okay I government go, help right. basically I go to the library I get an email I go to <laughs> one of the social or uh, outreach places and I get a bus pass I get approved for housing. I now have everything I need to push something forward. I can use my food stamps to get stuff to make crafts. I can find different stuff in the community that's been thrown out that I can use to make crafts. But you're not allowed to make money while getting government assistance. Right. So you're 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 so allowed now, to have government help but you're not allowed to help yourself. Right. So we give people everything they need to sustain themselves but we don't let them use their own creativity and intelligence and, and social aspects to change their situation. If I have an entrepreneurial spirit but I have signed papers and I get help that says I can't do that, the only thing I can do is go work for someone else. Right. I'm either going to be, I'm going to be one of those people who's either out here or indoors, but never getting out of that situation. But if I can get a way for people to contact me, 
a way for me to contact other people. I can get a, a place to put up a platform so that people know what I'm doing and how I can help them and how they can help me and a way we can work together. And I have a space where I can rest, where I can store different items, where I can keep my hygiene up, where I can cook food. Then I have everything I need to exist and to build something that's going to allow me to sustain myself. And what are we doing as a country if we give people the basic foundation we need so that they could aspire to do their dreams? We make them, we give them dignity and we make them feel equal and we give this opportunity that they wanted every night they were too, oh, they were way too cold. Every night where they couldn't get off of a piece of ground that's a hundred degrees or hotter. So are you saying that it's not so much throwing money at the problem as much as maybe the solution is to give people the tools to help themselves? Exactly. Okay. okay. And so part of it is, it's like, what BOP is doing, anybody can do. If they have the courage and, and if stomach enough If they have the courage and the know-how. Anybody can do what you're doing if they have the interest, if they have the creativity and they can get the tools. Okay. So you definitely support what uh, veterans on patrol right. are doing. And it's like, even though your ideology might be different. Well, it's like, I might be more liberal, they might be more conservative. But the basic idea is the same. The same core, it, you right. share the same core values. Right, it's okay. knowing that we're all just people and we're all trying to get somewhere better. We're all trying to have a better community and we need a place to do that. If you get, you go anywhere in this city, get a group of people who are like-minded in a space where they can cultivate their dreams and see what happens. That's how the 420 Social Club happened. That's how Tucson was created. That's how we got EGs. That's how we got all these news stations. When we, we did it, we got the railroads. We got these big monuments. We got all through, these buildings. Through collaborations and through encouraging, giving people right. the tools to through make it happen. small groups in the community who were like-minded, who had a space to cultivate their idea. And be encouraged right. to, and the tools given to right. actually make so it happen. So if you look at some of the think tanks they're doing in downtown Tucson, you got the co-connect and you got startup Tucson and you got these different spaces. They're doing that same thing. The same thing is happening at the 420 Social Club. You get people in a safe place, they're like-minded, they come up with ideas. They perform different things. They become us. What What is the 420 Social Club? The 420 Social Club is a place is a safe place for medical marijuana patients and to co uh, to come and medicate and share ideas with like-minded people, have fun and organize different events. And it's actually ran by uh, by an organization called the Fourth Avenue Cultural Association, which works to bring diversity and is social events, promotes local activities, and and gives back to the community. Okay. And it's ran by a lot of different activists in this city. And so you know, it makes it a place where, you know, if you're doing, can if, if you have a legal right to do cannabis, if you're in government housing, you're not allowed to do that there. It might be your medication. It might be what helps you get through the pain, helps you get through so the day. So it provides a legal, safe place for people to medicate right. themselves on 
if they're card holders. Right. Okay. okay. And part of what we're, and it's like we're helping to gather signatures to bring about uh, legalizing recreational use. We're helping with, as a, a we're a drop-in center for Op Safe Winter, which is ran by the um, by the uh, anonymous collective worldwide, as a drop-off for winter supplies if people want to help people. So in the it's community. a cloth and and blanket. Uh, it it also another aspect of this club is it also helps donation efforts for right. clothes and blankets it it advocates for vets it helps be a place that where you could drop off supplies for uh, everybody out here it, it it's a place where some of the members help what we call the invisible disabled the people that are disabled but we can't just by speaking with them and being around them, we can't always tell. Okay. And so it's helping those people. It's speaking at city council to make sure people are heard. It's organizing different events. And it's helping local entrepreneurs have a low to no cost space to oh, sell their goods. Capitalize on their own individual right. talents, basically. Right. Okay. It's helping. Uh, and so uh, the nice thing is it's a place where we got people and we got space. So do, would you be uh, would you be for, I don't know if you're aware of this kind of thought of an uh, economic free zone to help bring up poverty? Right. Okay. And it's like it, part of the thing is businesses are struggling. A lot of people aren't talking about that. The reason why businesses don't aren't sure they want to help the homeless is because they're having uh, trouble helping themselves. Over fifty six businesses in the past three years have gone under. Is our local Tucson businesses? the new demographic of homelessness in Tucson. I hope not, but they're heavily regulated. They're heavily taxed. They're not given the tools. They're being restricted from right. the tools to, to prosper. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. It's like, so it's like, what do we do when the poor can't stop being poor because they're handcuffed? Businesses can't do more because they're handcuffed. And so it's like City Hall can uh, put a forum together for VOP to go and for a lot of other activists to go, for business to go, oh, and having a group discussion on what we could do to better the community. Okay. And the homeless want to talk about the, oh, what they need. The businesses talk about what they need. But everybody in there is there because they're either hurting or they're wanting to help and they got handcuffs. And government's an easy one to bag on. But it's like in that room, government's the one who's holding the key that's asking who, uh, who knows how to open the lock. All right. It takes the people. Right. It takes and the people to kind of, kind of, push the door open. Right. But it's the people who have to be the spontaneous social creatures they are, to realize they're all in the same box. Right. And you help each other. You have the safe place you can grow. It, it's our worst fears and our biggest insecurities on a mass scale that makes up government. So if we want to change the government, we got to change the culture. Okay. If we're going to change, before we could change the culture, we got to prove the model in our neighborhood. We need to change ourselves as individuals. Any banker and every, any stockbroker on Wall Street can tell you how to make money. 
Okay. What they can't tell you is how to make money without taking advantage of people. How to make money honestly. Well, and, and that's one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest hurdles I see is if, if you're in the homeless or houseless community, you can make money on the black market, you can make money illegally, you can make money in a dishonest way, maybe through theft or selling drugs or prostitution, but there's not enough there's not enough tools or outlets to make money in the same way, but in an honest way. Right, and so it's like part of what Sheriff Duknik always said, is if, when it comes to Tucson, if it wasn't for the Air Force Base, it wasn't for the university, and it wasn't for the black, the black market and the drug trade, Tucson would be a tumbleweed blowing in the desert. And then it's like, so what if we say if you're homeless, you can't be in the downtown area. Is that segregation? Well, sure, sure, but uh, it seems like the people's solution is is just make it go away, make it disappear. That's the that's the the solution. But homelessness and and people in poverty isn't something that's ever going to go away. It's something that's been in our human history. Right, all but throughout. will war go away? Well, probably not, but we could hope for it. But, but it, we have a war against poverty. We got a war against drugs. But it's like people out here just call themselves people. It's society that gives them the name homeless. Just as at one point in America, we called people by a derogatory name, but that's not the name they call themselves. Okay. So, in other words, you think. Uh, outside of the, the homeless community, just to coin a term, that term homeless might have a negative impact? Is yeah, that, okay. because it's like when you hear the news, that when they mention homeless, it's like at Ronstadt. They say Ronstadt needs to be changed because you got drug dealers, you got the homeless, and you oh, got gangbangers. So they're well, mixing homeless into right. to people who commit crime. Right. So it's more, it's, I guess what you're, you're trying to say is homeless people are, are profiled and it seems like the homeless are a minority that's being abused. Yeah, they are. And it's no different than the Jim Crow stuff in the 1960s. The average person out here doesn't have the same network as someone on another side of town. Well, sure. So if you're only as strong as what you're allowed to do, what resources you have, and what network you have, right? It's like part of what I was talking to, um, just uh, to um, what's that um, guy with the conservatives here in town, Kelly? Um. Oh yeah, the the guy who ran for. Um, City Council Kelly yeah. Lawton. Yeah. Kelly Lawton. Yeah, I was talking to him and I was talking to him about some of the legal stuff I'm working on and he tells me, you know what, that sounds good. You definitely want to talk to an attorney, see if they agree. What's well, like part of I, what I brought up to him is. I don't have that network. Do you know someone who's willing to listen, even if I can't pay it? Right. So it's like, part of the reason he can do what he does is because he has that network. Right. Part of the reason Lewis can do what he does is because he, he has, has that network. network. I have a network. Right. When we work together, we all have that network. We all kind of have to work with what we're given and, and the tools that we're got. Right. And, and the people that we're around. Sure. But we don't know that unless we say, hey, neighbor, what's up? <laughs> so it's bringing people together. Do you think Veterans on Patrol is bringing more people together? I think they're trying as hard as they can. I'm not sure if they completely get all of the culture that's out here because if you're going to break people down into different demographics out here you got 
people that are nomads. You got people so that you are think hobos. maybe if I was the homeless, you got the if houseless. I wasn't a veteran and I'd be walking by and I'd see veterans on patrol, I might not think it applies to me. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's like to some of the homeless out here, you got all these flags, you got all these guns. It seems aggressive. But no, in reality and practice, is it aggressive? It's not aggressive, it's protective. Okay. It's making sure the flags are there to know that this is about freedom, this is about one people, one country. So if you were homeless and you were watching this video, what would you tell, uh, say, someone homeless on the street that was needing help about veterans on patrol? I would say that you got good concerns, but it's definitely something worth looking more into, and it might be something that benefits you. So at, put away your fear and, and walk on right. up and see what's going on? Feel, it's like engage the people in your neighborhood. Okay. Just like if you're in a home and you see someone who's not as well off on you, engage them as your neighbor. Not necessarily as someone down on their luck. Or someone on opposing sides. Right. Just engage them as if they were family? Right. Okay. Because it's like when it comes down to it, that's what we are. Yeah. It's In like... one way or, or, or another. That's it's like if Lewis needs me, I'm going to be here. If you need help with something you're doing over there, I'm going to uh, try so to be there. It's building it's, coalitions on what we agree on and then discussing what we don't agree on to see where we come up right. with but do it with respect right because it's like it's like the people here at BOP might be more conservative than I am but it's like part of the whole thing is whatever your politics is you keep it off the property do you think you and agree so with the, the VOP more than you disagree with them on most things, uh, being contrasting ideologies? I think they're doing exactly what needs to be done, where it needs to be done. Awesome. And I think that the people driving the will are the right people for the job at this exact time. So you definitely put 100% support behind what they're doing? Right. Okay, cool. And if it takes a few guns to make it safe, it takes a few American flags to show people what America is really about. Or should be about. Right. Now, part of the thing that you need to remember is we think sometimes that the flag represents the government that is the imperial government. But it's at the same time, that's not their flag. It's our flag. What, what you're describing is kind of the contrast. One of the things that is contrasting with the Occupy movement and the Tea Party movement, where the Tea Party movement holds the flag in pride, where the Occupy movement will use the flag and even deface it in protest. Right. Because, but that shouldn't divide the two parties. Well, it's like it's all based on perception, and perception's the big battle. Because when it comes down to it, it's just a piece of cloth flying in the wind. But it's what each one of us perceive and believe that gives it meaning. Some people want to look at the imperialistic aspect. Other people want to say it doesn't represent that. It represents freedom. And it's my flag. But both and together, both, both groups seem to, if you put both groups together, it would seem like on one aspect it would it would talk out against the negative part of of Ameri being American and Americanism and then also promoting the positive part. So right. okay, okay. And so it's like a, whatever you want to do with the flag, do what you want with it. It's your freedom. Well, I prefer freedom. I definitely right. and do. I prefer freedom and it's like the more you take my rights away the more you start the path to take your own right I my agree. freedom is guaranteed in you being free when you restrict the rights of others you don't you indirectly are gonna restrict right. your own rights in the long and run. it's like we should be able to 
have an intellectual conversation without getting emotionally charged. Well, when you get angry, when you get mad, it seems to, you're almost drunk. It seems to blind you. Right, and it's like one thing I found out about the, uh, found out a long time ago is when it comes to the Occupy, when it comes to the Tea Party, both groups are about accountability. Both of them are about empowering the person. Both of them are about investing in the American people. Both of them are about making America what it should be, not what it currently is. So you see a lot of uh, a lot of things. You see a lot of points where both of those two contrasting groups agree on. Right, and that if that's where we agree that's where we build maybe that's where we need to have our focus and not focus on what we disagree right. on to cause the right. division and so it's like part of what i tell city council and i tell government uh, different people in government and businesses is what do we agree on because let's talk about that Right, let's not, let's put aside what we disagree on, let's talk about what we do agree right. on and build on that. And then let's take about oh, the stuff that we agree on, and let's see how the stuff we come up for that helps our ideas of what we don't agree on. Is there, okay. is there anything uh, that, that you wanted to include in this interview, or anything else that you, you feel that you need to say at this time? I would say, I would just say definitely keep tuning in to the Tillman News Network and I would say if you have an idea and you want to do something, the only thing stopping you is that button, the chair. So the only thing stopping you is yourself. Right. So overcome whatever fears would overcome any anxieties. and. And go out there and make a positive impact right, in the world. at least talk to people about it. Go right to the source and find out what the real story is. Right. Okay. Anthony, always a pleasure, yeah. man. Thank you very much Thank for you. the interview. Awesome.